Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. The burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Please stand, church, and let's ask the Lord to be with us this morning. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we approach you this morning with joy and excitement, ready to praise your holy name. We now lay down our burdens, we lay down our guilt, we lay down our shame, and we let go of any anger towards our brothers and sisters. May your Holy Spirit flood this place, and may our worship be an acceptable sacrifice that pleases you. Amen. Please uh, remain standing and let's sing our opening hymn, hymn number 612, Onward Christian Soldiers. Hymn number 612.
Well, that was wonderful, wasn't it? Just transports you to another place. That's what it did for me. The music of heaven, maybe. Um, I guess this is a good chance as well, just before I tell you about some church life things, just to welcome our guest organist today, uh, Ray Egan. We're very happy to have you here, Ray. Uh, thanks very much for leading us in worship this morning. So, yeah, just a couple of quick announcements. I think Pastor Shane has been telling you about two of the things we have coming up in the next few weeks. One is koinonia. Koinonia is a Greek word meaning fellowship. So this is a chance for us as a church to kind of get together midweek and, and have fellowship. It's a chance for us to, what we're trying to do is take our small groups ministry and make it like a kind of big small group, if you will. So I really hope you guys can come on Wednesday nights. Um, we're going to have a time of worship together, some light food, uh, then we'll split off into Bible studies where we can learn about what it means to become a better disciple and just to have community with one another. So Koinonia, I hope you'll all come to support the first one. That starts Wednesday, September 6 at 6.45 p.m. Uh, in the chapel. And the second announcement I want to quickly make is that, as you may have, may not have heard, uh, Praxis is moving to Friday nights. So we decide, we've been going for about a year now. Praxis Church has been doing very well. But we think um, for the purposes of growth and because we'd like you guys to be with us worshipping, we're now going to move to Friday night and have a kind of Vespers service together. So please come and support us again. Um, a lot of people come up to me and tell me, Luke, I'm a bit too old to go to Praxis, aren't I? And I keep telling people, no, you're not. It's not just for youth. It's not just for young adults. We'd like to have as many people there as possible. So again, pray for us and please come to support the first Praxis Friday night service, uh, which will be September 8 at 7.30 p.m. in the chapel. All this information is on the slide behind me and also in your bulletins. Um, but at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Jason to come up and tell us a little bit about what's going on at Communitas. Jason. Good morning. I am very happy to be here this morning to share with you what we've done. We've just completed uh, our fiscal year. So I want to share some of the, the happenings that uh, occurred in that past year and the last few months of our Jumpstart Center here at Vallejo Drive Church. Uh, so you'll be happy to know in our poverty recovery program, our average increase in monthly take home for our families and individuals remains above 100% increase in monthly take home from the last year to this year. Uh, a success story, if you will, there's a family from that program, we're just transitioning them out, has been in transitional housing for six years. After five months in our program, we have doubled their income. The entire family are now receiving the mental health and counseling that they wanted to deal with the trauma of being in transitional housing. We've got the mother, the medical uh, attention she needs, so she too can now go back to work. And after 12 months, they're now stable and ready to move out of transitional housing and be more independent for the first time in six years. And you are part of making that possible. Another success story I'd like to share with you. Uh, you may have seen a video that was shown here uh, four or five months ago. And in that video, uh, there's a woman named Dion uh, that said she was very grateful to Communitas because it, it didn't just help with jobs or finding a place to live. It really helped with the whole person. Uh, if you've ever been here on a Tuesday afternoon, you may have noticed her walking in and out of the building because she is our Jumpstart case manager. After going through that programming and getting herself on her feet, she says, I want to do what you do. Can you train me how to do that? Would you be willing to employ me? So after some training, we've employed her, and she is now the Jumpstart case manager and has been for the last seven months, helping hundreds of other people find jobs, find housing, get the support that they need, and you help make that possible. Uh, Jumpstart. Speaking of Dion, she is gone to the libraries, uh, working at a Pacific Park library every third Thursday, helping people there. Her work and our partnership uh, at Veterans Village with Wellness Works 
Uh, our main donor for that project, uh, where we provide services, uh, jobs, referrals, placements, and your own Brian Schwartz comes and does money management for low-income vets from Vietnam era to the current returnees uh, every Wednesday. Dignity Health, our sponsor for that, came and played a site visit, and two weeks ago, said, we are so impressed with the work that you and Wellness Works are doing for these veterans, you are now approved to reapply for next year, and not just approved, we want you to. We're expecting to see a grant request come in from you. Um, and you have made that possible. Here at Vallejo Drive, uh, we started a few months ago a Jumpstart Center here. You'd be happy to know that Pacific Clinics, Head Start, but primarily your own thrift store across the street have been bringing people into this location to get those services, to get those resumes, to get better medical health and find housing and jobs because this is local to their area, it is a safe place and you've made that happen for them. They come here because it's close to where they live, because they can get access to resources and over two dozen return participants uh, we've gotten two of them uh, a jobs almost immediately. Over a hundred referrals have gone out from this location. Uh, and a mother of two referred to us by a member of this congregation, fleeing domestic violence, came here because she knew that this was a safe place to be. We were able to get her place into Door of Hope uh, as, as a place where she and her children could recover, recoup, and rebuild. And she did that because she knew this is a safe place to come and be. So all in all, for Jumpstart, from the beginning to now, nearly 4,000 people have been reached. Nearly 4,000 people have been educated as their services in our community. Nearly 4,000 people have received jobs, uh, uh, services, announcements, gotten medical help. And so on behalf of our board, on behalf of our staff, but primarily on behalf of the moms, dads, and children that you have helped through this program, I would like to say thank you. If these are services that you yourself would need or interested in, take a look at the insert that's in your bulletin. Visit us. We can help you out. If you're interested in seeing that these services continue, we invite you to visit us and donate there or write it in on, a, on an envelope and put it in the offering. You guys have made an direct impact in transforming our neighbors' lives and in many cases actually saving them. So again, thank you very, very much because Communitas could not have done it without the support from Vallejo Drive Church. So thank you and have a great Sabbath. Thank you, Jason. Will the deacons come forward uh, to collect the offering, please? Um, Today, of course, we have that call for uh, Communitas, and please uh, give that a lot of consideration. It's a very important ministry uh, for the in city of Glendale. It not only benefits those people who get the services from it, but it gives an opportunity for many different churches and service organizations to participate, all of us uh, collecting our efforts toward that ministry. Um, today, uh, the the regular loose offering goes to church budget. Um, now, church budget sounds like a very mundane thing, um, but uh, we do have a ministry here in Glendale. Uh, part of uh, providing this sanctuary is part of that ministry, and we have uh, a wonderful place to come worship, to invite people to come worship for uh, travelers coming through to come and enjoy their uh, Sabbath rest to enjoy clean restrooms and cool air uh, during the summer, warm air during the winter, um, lights, all of these are very practical things that uh, we need to take care of. Um, so that is part of our mission here in uh, to the city of Glendale. Um, so uh, mark your uh, tithe envelopes accordingly. Any loose offering goes to church budget. Um, Will the deacons please uh, collect the offering? Oh, 
before we begin, let me, uh, let me uh, offer a little prayer. Father in heaven, we ask that you uh, inspire our hearts to give uh, generously and to support your mission here, to support Communitas and all of the other ministries that we have, we ask in Jesus' name. Congregation, please stand. Please bow your heads. Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessings and the privileges and opportunities that we have. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to give back, and uh, we ask that you bless these offerings for their intended use in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, while you are standing, we want to invite the children to come up for the children's story, and we want to invite you to greet each other with a hug or a kiss or a handshake.
Good morning. How are you today? School starting this week, huh? Exciting. I want to ask you a question. How many of you have a dog or a cat at your house? Well, my dog, my dog's name is Rosie. And she does something when I'm eating. What do you think it's called? It's called begging. Even though you might say no to her, she will sit there until every last bite of food is gone, hoping that you will let her have something or that you will accidentally drop something, which happens sometimes. She doesn't give up till it's all gone. Now, there was a woman in the Bible that talked to Jesus, and she wanted something from him. She wanted him to heal her daughter. But Jesus said that he didn't want to do it right then. But she didn't give up. She kept on asking. Her daughter was very, very sick. And she didn't give up, just like our pets don't give up. Because they know there's something good there. And they want it. So the woman kept on asking, even though the disciples said, let us send her away. Well, she came to Jesus and she asked him again, Master, will you heal my daughter? That's what they called Jesus, only it was not in English. Will you heal my daughter? She's very sick. And I think she even got down on her knees and begged. And Jesus said, Well, not right now. And she said, Master, is there not even a little crumb falling from my table that, that maybe you can do it for me? And you know what he said? He said, your faith is very great. You didn't give up. Now, do you ever pray about something and you don't get it right away? And you think maybe God's not listening? What do you think? God always listens to us. Sometimes he thinks that maybe it would be better for us to have that thing later, like a new toy or a new job for the grown-up people or maybe a better house. God says, well, I think you should have that later on. But you still should you should not give up asking for it just like the woman didn't give up because Jesus said your faith is so great I'm going to heal your daughter right now and he did that was wonderful wasn't it well who would like to tell me something that you have prayed for for our aunt to feel better for family member to feel better? Elephants. Do you pray for elephants? Yeah, elephants are in danger. Anybody else? I like my dog candy. Do you pray for your doggy? Yeah. Well, I want to tell you not to give up 
and to keep on praying for those things and remember the woman that finally got what she wanted. I'm going to ask you to go back to your parents now. There is no children's church today. invite those who would like to come forward during our prayer to please do so while we are singing our hymn as we come to you in prayer.
gracious and mighty God, we ascribe to you all glory and strength. We ascribe to you all the glory that is due your name. We come together, dear Lord, to worship you in the splendor of your holiness. We are together as a congregation this morning, dear Lord. As a community, we are here to worship you. We are here to set this time apart from the rest of our busy lives. We ask, dear Lord, that we prepare ourselves for the reading of your word. And before that, we ask, dear Lord, to look into our hearts, cleanse our hearts, take away our pride, our selfishness, make us humble so that we can be ready to receive whatever you have in store for us this morning. Dear Lord, as we look around, we are reminded of your soon coming, but that doesn't take away the sadness, the hurt that we see in people in our own home, where we live, in our country, and all around the world. Make us a vessel so that we can, through prayer, through service, through kind words, that we can show your love to others amidst the chaos, amidst the hate, and amidst all the turmoil that we see on a daily basis in our world. We specifically ask for those that have been affected by big tragedies over the last week or two here in our own country, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, everywhere, dear Lord. There is so much pain and so much hurt. And we as Christians know that you are the one that can give us the peace that we need so that we can share it with others. We ask, dear Lord, to please make us vehicles of that peace. We have people that have come forward with special requests, special praises. I ask, dear Lord, that you would lend an ear to us, be attentive to our praises, be attentive to our cries for help. Don't turn away from us. Let us have the assurance that as we have asked, you have listened, and in your time and according to your will, you will provide healing, you will provide restoration, you will provide whatever our needs are at this particular time. Dear Lord, as Pastor Luke prepares to bring us a message, help us to put everything else out of our minds. Help us to focus on the words of scripture because they are your words. You left us all these words through the prophets, through the disciples, as a way to show us your character. Humble us right now so that we can be prepared to receive that message. The Lord is our strength. You are our strength, O Lord. You are our fortress and salvation. You are the anointed one. Save us, dear Lord, your people. Bless your inheritance. Be our shepherd and carry us in your loving arms forever. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. Feels good to be back here and back home. Um, our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew 15, 21 through 28. I will be reading along in the New Revised Standard Version. And if you also want to follow along, it's on the screen as well. Jesus left the place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Good to see you all here today, ready to hear God's word. Um, as I always ask, if you don't mind, if you have a hard copy of your Bible, have that with you. If you have it on your phone or iPad or whatever, have that at your side, because I'm going to be referring to the passage quite a few times this morning. So it will just help you keep track of where we're going. So in today's gospel reading that we just read, we have this standoff between a Jew and a Gentile. Jesus and this woman, we don't know her name, they come head to head in this very, very confrontational, it's almost like a verbal fencing match. It's a very suspenseful and surprising encounter between two strangers. And if we're honest, even Jesus says some very shocking things in this passage. Now, we won't go too heavy and too deep, but just to start with, I want you to track with me here. As we read this story, let's notice that Matthew, you know, the gospel writer who's writing this, he's dropping a few textual hints for us, clues to help us understand what he's doing. So let's do a little bit of exegesis together, and let's see what Matthew's trying to draw our attention to. Now, Immediately, straight off the bat, we read that Jesus is in the region of Tyre and Sidon. You heard of these places? Well, let me tell you, not just two random places. These are Gentile cities in the area of Phoenicia, and these two cities are frequently the object of condemnation by the Old Testament prophets. The object of condemnation because of their repeated idolatry, their Baal worship, their arrogant materialism. So Tyre and Sidon, that means something to us as readers. Secondly, notice that Jesus is not on a mission to preach to the Gentiles, not at this point. Jesus has simply come to the area. Notice it says Jesus has come to the, to the region not to the cities themselves. Jesus has come to the region. Why? To have respite from the scribes and the Pharisees, the guys who have been giving him hassle, the guys who have been opposing him so far. So, in other words, Jesus is here in this area. He's here to enjoy some quiet time, away from the crowds and the multitudes, when this very flustered woman runs up to him, pleading for help for her demon-possessed daughter. And the last, biggest hint that Matthew gives us is in this woman's ethnicity. Did you pick up on that? She's a Canaanite. Some of your versions might say Syrophoenician. She's a Canaanite. 
Now, obviously, if you know anything about your Bibles, this racial identification is more than just casual storytelling. Canaanites were the most persistent and the most insidious of all of Israel's enemies. The Canaanites were the ones who, who Israel had warred with throughout almost the whole of the Old Testament. The Canaanites were the thorn in Israel's side. If the Canaanites weren't completely wiping out the Israelites, they were leading them into pagan worship, leading them into sinful, idolatrous practices. So when this Canaanite woman approaches Jesus, the disciples balk. And so would you if you were a first century Jew reading this text for the first time. So Matthew, what he's doing here, he's cleverly setting up this story to make us think, oh, let's keep this woman at arm's length. But she throws herself at Jesus' feet. She says, Kiri, Kiri, which means Lord, Lord, help me. See, on some level, even though she hasn't met Jesus before, on some level, she knows this man is the Son of God. But now, the real shock takes place. Something that should concern people who expect Jesus to be the all-loving, all-compassionate, all-embracing guy that he is. Jesus rebukes the woman, and he rebukes her plea. He says, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which was, to some degree, true. Jesus had come to help the Jews, and so far, his whole ministry had taken place entirely in Galilee. Jesus says to the woman, in effect, I'm not here for you. And then it gets worse. To add insult to injury, Jesus tells her, it's not fair to take the children's food and give it to dogs. Now, you probably know that the Jews often referred to the Gentiles as dogs, and this wasn't in some cute way that we often think about small dogs now. This was in a very pejorative sense. Jesus reminds her that the children, who are the Jews, that the children are in a position of, of right, and of privilege, but a position in which the dogs cannot hope to have any share. Jesus here is very offensive. Jesus here is very rude. Jesus here is kind of racist. So it would seem like there is no hope for this Canaanite woman, no hope for her sick daughter. Here is where the story turns. Bold, feisty, she refuses to accept Jesus' words. She will challenge him for her vindication. She will nag him for justice. Yes, Lord, she says, yet even the dogs get to eat some of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She says, I may be a non-Israelite, I, I may be a Gentile, you can even call me a dog, but even dogs get leftovers. Even I should receive grace. Such, such deep insight. Because this woman, maybe she doesn't even know this, but she has made a statement that encapsulates the theological message running throughout the whole of Scripture. The message is this, Israel was chosen by God, not from the world, but for the world. A couple of passages that spring to mind, which the guys might be able to get on the screen for us here. When God calls Abraham in Genesis 12, God says, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Uh, another passage that says the same thing in Isaiah 49 verse 6. 
It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach just you, just your people. No, that my salvation will reach to the ends of the earth. You see, the grace extended to Israel was never supposed to be an exclusive grace, something to be grasped and held onto tightly. It was meant to be a blessing and it was meant to be a light for the rest of the world. And so the Canaanite woman, she intuits this and so she won't give up. Even I should receive grace. And now Jesus' whole demeanor changes. Woman, he says, great is your faith. You really get it, don't you? You really understand God's grace. Let your daughter be healed. And her daughter instantly is healed. So if you're anything like me, you got a couple of questions about this text, right? It's a little bit confusing. Did the Canaanite woman change Jesus' mind? No. Is Jesus really that insensitive? No. Was Jesus being racist? Of course not. But what he does here is he deliberately challenges the woman in order to guide her into expressing her own deepest knowledge. And if you're a teacher, any teachers here, you'll know this kind of teaching technique. You know, sometimes when I teach guitar to people, I'll, deliver, I'll deliberately, I'll play the wrong chord. I'll play the wrong notes just to see whether the student is listening and to see whether the student is noticing. And hopefully it pushes the student into speaking up and challenging me, showing that they're getting it. And so in the same way, Jesus as an expert teacher chooses to debate with this woman in a very confrontational way. Why? In order to draw out her faith. And so far from being on the fringes of God's good grace, Jesus applauds her refusal to accept defeat and he commends her for having great faith, something he doesn't say about anyone else in the entire gospel. So just a couple of points to leave you guys with today as we reflect on this passage. Firstly, and I mean this, stand up for yourself and recognize your worth because God has given you, yes, even a wretch like you, amazing grace. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't deserve grace because you do. And now that the grace has been extended to you, what are you supposed to do with it? Give it away. Give it away. As we've seen, Israel was chosen not to keep grace for herself, but to bless the rest of the world with it. In the same way, you all have been saved not from the world, but saved for the sake of the world. As the Canaanite woman reminds us here, we're all dogs, aren't we, a lot of the time? Undeserving, sinful, deliberately going against God's will for our lives. Yet we still receive crumbs. We still get to be recipients of his grace. So we go out there and we share those crumbs with other people. You see, grace Grace is one of those paradoxical gifts. The more you give it away, the more you become enriched yourself. You know, I think of a story like the feeding of the 5,000. The disciples are nervous, right? Because they only have, uh, what do they have? They have uh, five loaves and two fish. How are we going to feed all these people, they say? What does Jesus say? Give it away. Just give it away. What about us? Well, somehow, 
there's enough bread and enough fish for 5,000 people and 12 baskets left over. Why 12? One for each of the disciples. Much more than they even began with. Extend love, extend forgiveness and grace to others and do it recklessly and do it generously. And God promises that your own life will be enhanced. Lastly, one more thing that I think this Canaanite woman teaches us today. Nag God. Persist with God. Be bold in telling God what needs to happen. I think we get nervous sometimes about expressing our true feelings to God, as though somehow he's going to be offended at us or something like that. But that's not what we find in the Bible at all. Think of the Israelites in slavery crying out to God to rescue them, to release them. And God hears their groaning. He remembers his covenant promise and he delivers them. Or think of one of, well, one of many of David's Psalms saying repeatedly things like, I call upon you, Lord. Come quickly to me. Listen to my voice when I call you. The biblical authors won't let God off the hook so easily. They nag him for justice to be done. Just like the Canaanite woman insists that Jesus listen to her cause and bring justice to her. And it works. So guys, whatever it is that you're going through right now, I really want to encourage you to pray. Pray with zeal. Pray with passion, pray with boldness, pray with heart. Obviously not praying for silly, frivolous things, but praying that justice would be done. Justice for yourself, justice for this church, justice for the world. And again, it's not so much that we're convincing God to care. It's not like that. But here's the thing. When we nag God, when we nag God, it means that we're still hoping we're still trusting. We're still expecting God to act. So when our world and our country is so broken, as we've seen in Charlottesville, in Barcelona, there's something important about having to nag God because it reminds us that we still care. So friends, I hope that you dare to pray with the same courage as the Canaanite woman. Stand up for your own dignity. Stand up for your own worth. Understand that grace is this endless gift that you can share generously with other people. And continue to nag God that his justice will be done in the world. Amen. Friends, it's the last time we're going to get to sing a hymn this week, so I encourage you, sing like you mean it. Make it count. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn. It's hymn number 432, Shall We Gather at the River? Hymn number 432.
Amen. Amen. So may we leave this place with the faith of the Canaanite woman. May we accept the grace that you have given to us. May we share it generously and recklessly with the rest of the world. Let your justice roll down like a river from heaven to earth. Amen. You guys can take a seat. Have a wonderful weekend.